Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are starting a new series today going over the 2022 external exams in Queensland, Australia for general mathematics. And in this particular video, our focus is on four questions from paper one on multiple choice um, on the topic of bivariate data. Now, if you're not in Queensland or not even in Australia, this will still be relevant to you. If you're studying bivariate data, um, you want to know what kind of exam questions you, should, you could possibly get, have a look at these. You may not get one that's multiple choice, but understanding different types of questions for bivariate data is always helpful. So let's get into our first question. It was question eight. The scatter plot shows the annual number of visitors to the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. Now it's always a good idea to have an inspection of the scatter plot before you read the question just so you understand what the scatter plot is showing. We can see on the x-axis, that's our horizontal axis, we've got years extending from 2010 to 2020. So it's almost like a time series. And then on our y-axis, which is our vertical axis, we've got visitor numbers in millions. Um, so it's not two people that visited the park, it was two million people that visited the park. So let's look at our question now. For 2018, the annual number of visitors could best be... And we've got some choices, interpolation and extrapolation. Now, this is where you need to remember your definitions for interpolation and extrapolation. Remember, interpolation means inside the data set that you've been given. Extrapolation means you're making predictions into the future or way into the past. So basically, years before 2010 or years after 2020. Now, in this case, we're asked for 2018. That's inside our data set. So straight away, um, we're going to be looking from 2018. We can draw a line up to where we think the trend is going. We can actually eliminate um, options B and D because they're extrapolations and we're focusing here on interpolation. Now, without a line of best fit, we're really just looking to see what the trend might be here. Now, there's two choices for interpolation. One is 2.7 million, one is 3.2 million. Now, it's possible that there was a massive jump in visitors in the year 2018. There's possible there was a massive drop in visitors. We just don't know. We've got to follow the trend. And the trend seems to be that it's um, grown slightly, slightly, slightly from about this year 2011. And then we're reaching this plateau point where it's just flattened out here. So my best prediction here would be that it's going to be the same as the year before and the year after, that it's just sort of flattened out there. Quite possibly they've made a limit to the number of visitors to the park and that's why that's the maximum number of visitors you can actually have. Now if we take our line back out to the side of the axis we can see that sitting at three sorry 2.7 million. 3.2 is all the way up here. Um, it's outside the data set so definitely not a valid prediction. So we can only go with the option of a interpolated at 2.7 million. Let's look at our next question, question 10. Which example states an explanatory variable followed by a response variable? Now, first of all, you need to remember when we're talking about explanatory variables and response variables, we're talking about bivariate data. So that's our first thing. Now, let's have a quick think and remember what we know about bivariate data. Well, we know it draws scatter plots. We know that the explanatory goes on the x-axis, x-explanatory, x-axis. And we know that the response goes on the y-axis. We also know that we're comparing numerical data, not categorical data. So that's information from very, very beginning of unit Three. So remember, categorical data is a data, if I asked a survey question, I'd be given a word. And numerical data is I'd be given a number. So let's have a quick look at option A, car manufacturers. So that would be things like Nissan, Toyota, Ford, car colors, red, green, blue. They're all word answers. That means it's going to be eliminated. Dog breeds, so that's things like poodles, Dobman, um, Great Dane, all words. Frequency of dog names, so Scamp, Max, Charlie, also all words. So we can eliminate those. They're, both of those are categorical data, which means that C and D are our numerical data types. So both of them are bivariate data. We've just got to decide which one has the explanatory variable first and the response variable second. Now remember, explanatory variable doesn't necessarily cause the response variable, but it influences or could have an influence on it. So if I think about plant growth and the amount of fertilizer used, well, I'd be expecting that the more fertilizer I put on, the more my plant would grow, not the other way around, that my plant grows and then I'd go, oh, it's growing, I'm going to 
decide now to put some fertilizer on. So we can eliminate C because it's the wrong order. Let's have a quick think about D, daily temperatures versus daily ice cream sales. Well, I would expect that the hotter it gets, the more ice cream I would sell. So definitely temperatures influence ice cream sales. So therefore, that's our correct answer. Let's look at question 11 now. The equation of a fitted line, also known as a line of best fit or a least squared regression line, for the number of three free, th free throws in basketball T and the number of hours in a training session H is T equals 26.781 plus 12.974 H. Now, don't get too caught up in what the formula is. Let's just think about what it's asking us. It's saying that H is the number of free throws um, and sorry, T is the number of three throws and H is the number of hours we've trained. So the hours we trained brings us to the more free. So obviously the idea is that the more we train, the more free throws we're going to get. So if I've done a five hour training session, what I'm going to be doing here is substituting H equals five into the equation. Now, um, I'm going to put that in brackets. The reason why is it's very tempting to add these two numbers first and then times the answer by five. But this number is not multiplied by five, only this number is multiplied by five. So that's why I'm gonna put it in brackets. So 12.974 times five gives me 64.87, add that onto the 26 and you get 91. Now you'll notice that all of the answers are rounded, that's because the question asked us to round to the nearest whole number, which means we now have to decide whether to round the 91 up or the 91 um, down. Now this 6 next to the decimal point is greater than 5. That tells me I need to round the 1 up to a 2. The answer is going to be 92. Our final question on paper 1 on bivariate data um, has four different scatter plots. We've got to demonstrate a strong negative association. I'm just going to show you each of these one by one. You could probably spot it straight away, but let's have a look at what the other ones are first in case you're a beginner and are not quite sure. So the first one follows an exact line, which means it's perfect correlation. And it goes um, as the x-axis gets bigger, the y-axis gets bigger. So we're going up from smallest to biggest in this direction, which makes it a perfect positive. B, we've got no correlation at all. I could draw a gazillion lines through that set of data and I would not necessarily have the right line of best fit here. We can't work out what the association is. There's just no correlation at all. Um, C, we can see this time that the numbers, um, as the x-axis gets bigger, the y gets smaller, which means we've got negative correlation. So it's going down towards the x-axis. And we've also got a fairly strong correlation there. So that would be our strong neg negative. We could stop right here and choose C. Um, but let's have a quick look at the last one. It's the opposite of C. It's going in the other direction. Um, and so it's a strong positive. And my guess would be that the probably the um, most chosen incorrect answer would have been D uh, because people don't know the difference between the, the negatives and the positives. So just having a look at that on your screen, you can see that one goes um, starts up high and then moves down. The other one starts down low and then moves high. So the direction it's moving towards, if it's moving down, that's negative. If it's moving up, it's positive. Well, did you find this helpful? I sure hope you did. And if you did, you could tell us in the comments, um, like the video, you could share it with a friend, a teacher, a sibling who might be studying for their external exams, or you could like and subscribe. And that way you'll know when the next video in this series comes out. Another way to follow that is to also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you've got any questions about anything you saw in today's video, contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Thank you so much for watching today. I look forward to bringing the rest of this series to you shortly. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.